Hey guys, welcome back. It's uh, Steve from Nostalgia here. Uh, this is this uh, part two of the uh, Pi Station video series for how to make your own. Um, the next step in the process that we're going to talk about today is going to be how to load ROMs onto your Raspberry Pi through the network, um, how to change the theme, and there's a bunch of different themes, but we're going to focus on just the pixel theme. Um, but the method is the same for all of them, and then how to scrape the artwork so that the games aren't just text in the uh, in the menu, it'll actually show the box art, uh, and depending on the theme, maybe a little description, that type of thing. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you that I've already pre-downloaded uh, my ROMs, so I'm going to show you that right here. I just downloaded a few of each, a couple uh, Game Boy Advance, uh, Nintendo, Sega, Super Nintendo. I can't leave a link in the description to where I got them, but it is pretty easy to do if you just do a Google search uh, and look up Super Nintendo ROMs. There's a plethora of ways that you can find them. So uh, the first thing that we need to do before we can move any ROMs over is make sure that a Raspberry Pi is actually powered on, uh, connected to a TV, and it is connected to the wireless network that I've got or hardwired into your, your modem. So I've already gone ahead and done that before I started uh, making this video, but uh, if you haven't done that, make sure that it is turned on and on the main menu. From your computer, you're going to click on your start menu and you are going to be able to access your Raspberry Pi quite a few different ways. If you put backslash backslash RetroPie and hit enter, it'll search your network to find it, and in my case it did, so I've got it right here. Um, if you try that and it doesn't work, another option would be to click your start menu, type in my PC, open up the desktop app, and then click on network. And what this will do is it'll actually look through find all the different computers attached, and here's your RetroPie. So if I double click on this, it'll take me exactly to where I was. If you end up doing both of these things and you still cannot find your RetroPie or your Raspberry Pi on the network, what likely is the problem is that you don't have your share settings set properly. So what you'll need to do is you'll hit your start menu, uh, you'll go to your network and sharing center, which is right here. You'll click that and then you're gonna to go to change advanced sharing settings. And you'll wanna make sure that you've got uh, your network discovery is turned on and that you turn on file and printer sharing. And then if they're off, you'll cert them on, hit save changes, and then you should be good to go. It'll take a minute or so for your networks to refresh, but you'll be able to find them. So I'm gonna go back and pull that up. Here we are. So what I'm going to do is you'll see in here you've got a BIOS folder, configs folder, ROMs, and splash screens. Clearly we want to work within the ROMs folder. So I'm going to go ahead and double click the ROMs folder and I'm going to bring this over to the side so we can look at everything. And I'm also going to pull up my set of ROMs on this side so we can see clearly what we're doing. So you'll see here all of these folders are pre-installed on RetroPie. So these are all the emulators that are there and ready to use almost out of the box. There's a couple that aren't like PlayStation, Neo Geo, uh, a few things like that that need additional work, but I'll be making further videos to explain how to get those up and running. Um, but for the majority of them, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Sega, Game Boy, Genesis, all of that stuff is, is gonna be pretty cut and dry. So the first thing we're going to do is Game Boy Advance. So I'm going to look for my GBA folder on the RetroPie network. I'm going to double click on it. And I've got my Game Boy Advance games here. I'm literally just going to click and drag them. And it'll pop up and it'll say it's going to take X amount of time to transfer over. So we're going to let that finish. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and go back now that all those ROMs are there. And we are going to do the next one. So I've got Nintendo. So we're going to find NES on the list. Literally just going to highlight them all, click and drag. And that one was a lot quicker because the files are much smaller. And we're going to do the same with our Sega. So Sega here is going to be under uh, Genesis. And I'll click and drag those over. And then we're going to do the same with our last set of ROMs. Super Nintendo. So now we're going to scroll down to SNES. 
and we're going to move it over. And that's it. So now all the ROMs that I had on my desktop are now moved over to my Raspberry Pi. Um, so now we're going to switch over to the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to show you a few things. All right, well, here we are now on the actual uh, RetroPie menu. Uh, and what you'll notice is that there are no games here. And that's totally fine uh, because the Raspberry Pi was on when I transferred the ROMs over. You actually have to do a reset in order for them to show up on the menu, but they are there. Rest assured that they are sitting there right now on the SD card. Um, but before we do that, what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to download the theme. Um, for Pixel. And the reason we're going to do that first is because if we're going to go ahead and restart the emulation station, we may as well do that at the same time as uh, getting the theme up and running too. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is make sure that you've got a keyboard connected to your Raspberry Pi, and you're going to go ahead and select the Ras or sorry the RetroPie menu, and we're going to go down to ES Themes. ES is Emulation Station. So we're going to go ahead and enter that. And now I've actually got a keyboard connected. Uh, you're going to get a uh, warning up here that says if you want to run more than 10 systems or themes other than Carbon, Pixel, and then a few of the other ones that they have listed, um, you're running the risk of getting what's called a white screen of death. And that essentially just means that you, you almost brick your card. You have to reflash your card and start over. Um, there are ways to get around it, but they are they tend to be kind of hit or miss. So... Sometimes you can end up breaking your uh, your SD card and you have to kind of start from scratch. So I typically like to recommend staying within what they have as their guidelines here. Um, but I mean, you can, you can go ahead and do it at your own risk. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look. And right here, it's going to show us all the available themes that are here. And there's plenty more online that you can download uh, or you can find fan-made ones or, or other users uh, have created their own. Um, but today we're just going to put a focus on the pixel theme. So right here, install pixel theme. I'm going to hit enter. And then you're going to see that it codes on the bottom and it's actually done now. So now that that has been installed, we're going to hit the escape key. And that'll take us right back to the menu. And what you'll notice is that we aren't any farther along. The menu is still exactly where it's supposed to be or it's, it's where it was. We haven't switched over to the pixel theme. So in order to do that, you're going to press the start button and you are going to go down to UI settings and hit the A button. And then you're going to scroll down to theme set. Uh, and right now it's on carbon, but there's your pixel. So as soon as you hit pixel and you hit back, you'll notice that the background kind of changed a little bit. But just to be sure, what you'll do is you'll go down to quit and you'll restart emulation station. Are you sure you want to do that? We're going to hit yes. And now that we've restarted emulation station, you'll see suddenly all these emulators pop up and now we've got that really awesome pixelated style menu. So the next thing that we want to do is take a look at the actual video or sorry, the games, the ROMs that we've put in. So let's say we select uh, Super Nintendo. You'll notice that all of the games right now are just the, uh, the file name. There's, there's no additional artwork. There's nothing really else there. Um, the games work, you can click on them and enter into the game, but if you do that, um, that's essentially it. You're, you don't have any of the, the cool menu menu items. So in order to change that, you're going to press the start button on your controller. Hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, I know I just cut uh, from one section to another, but uh, my recording ended up uh, getting glitched. So uh, I ended up scraping it anyways, but I'm going to still go through the settings right here. So you'll hit scraper. And from here, you've got uh, Scrape from the Games DB, which is normal. Scrape Ratings is on. Scrape Now. We're going to hit A. And here you have some options to either uh, filter to only scrape missing images or scrape all images if you wanted to rescrape everything. Uh, and then here you can actually filter which system. So in this case, we are just going to do the Super Nintendo. And we're going to hit back. And we are going to hit filter, or sorry, we're going to scrape for all games and user decides on conflict. So what that means is if there is multiple uh, box arts or if it's confused and it isn't sure which game it is, it'll give you the option to actually go through the list and select the proper uh, artwork. So we'll hit start. It takes a little while to, to start going, 
um, it will run much faster if you have a wired connection versus Wi-Fi. It's about two to three times faster. So keep that in mind if you've got access to your modem and you can hardwire it, you'll, uh, you'll be much happier if you did that. All right, so that's it. It says four games successfully scraped. Um, and now we can go back and we can go back again. So this is what it'll look like. Uh, depending on the theme that you select, it'll actually have another option where it can show you how many players are in it, uh, a brief description of the game, uh, what it's rated, reviews, things like that. So those, those do exist depending on uh, which theme you select. Uh, I am going to quickly just show you guys what the gameplay in game is. We'll select Super Mario World, jump right into it quickly. Yeah, and what you'll notice is that it does a really good job upscaling to an HD TV. Um, and the emulation's on point. It, there, there's very little to no lag. I haven't noticed much. It depends on which console you're using. There's some consoles which are, are trouble just to begin with. But, uh, but for Super Nintendo and all the older stuff, they seem to run really, really well. So here we go. Just uh, play for a second here. Right. So now from here, anywhere in the game, actually, if you press the uh, start and select button on your controller at the same time, it'll kick you right back to the menu. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'll be working on part three, which will show you uh, a few other things that I've done with the Pi Station. Um, so stay tuned and be sure to turn notifications on if you haven't already. But uh, thank you guys so much. I will uh, talk to you soon.